Hi, everybody. Our guests are Lucy Arnez and Lawrence Luckenville. If you put their awards together, well, I really can't count them, but whether it's an Emmys or uh, telev the television I mentioned with the Emmys, but theater awards, uh, just motion pictures, everything, Golden Globe nominations, it all, it all goes into this family. And it's a great pleasure to have both Lawrence Luckenville and his wife, Lucy Arnez, here in our desert. And uh, they're both going to be appearing here very soon. And we're going to talk to you about their appearances in just a few seconds and a lot more about their lives. But first, a few words about the Camelot Theatres at 2300 Baristo Road in Palm Springs. And of course, these wonderful theatres bring you the finest in films, art films, documentaries, films from all over the world, films that have been nominated and have won awards. And uh, don't forget, there's wonderful food in the Camelot Cafe, as well as upstairs in the International Cafe, and uh, also fine, cool, wonderful drinks. So, the number to call for information is 760-325-6565. And now, to talk to Lucy and Lawrence. I, I think, first of all, I, I want to say, and, and Lucy, when I say Lucy Arnez, I am sure that our viewers put that together. Your mother was Lucille Ball, your father, Desi Arnaz. Yep. And I'm sure they've known that for a long time. You are going I to I didn't do know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you and, and, and you had your own show. You've done so much. But you're going to be here for the Betty Ford Center. Yeah. In March. Yeah, March 8th. Uh, yeah. I am the show for the first gala ever to raise money and awareness for the Betty Ford Children's Center, which takes care of the children of addicts and alcoholics. And it's sort of like an Al-Anon for young kids, which is a yeah. program long overdue, I think. And originally it was going to be Charo. She yeah. was uh, set to do the show, and I just saw her, but she was injured. She tried to separate two little dogs from arguing, oh, and dear. she got mauled, and ooh, but she's okay, but she can't perform. So they asked me if I would bring my show in, and I'm thrilled. So March 8th, it's going to be the Lucy Arnaz show, and it's not going to be the same show that I'm also booked to do my big band Latin Roots show at the McCallum next February. Believe it or not, it's almost the 14th. The year, the f it's the 11th. <laughs> no, but I meant 2000. Oh, yes, 2000. Right. 2014, February right. 11th, 2014. The big band Latin Roots show. So I didn't want to complicate that by doing the same show here. You know, almost it's a year. In, it's a year in advance, but still, you know, Mitch was so nice to allow me to do this right. as well as that. So we're yeah. going to. It's going to be two completely different shows. Yeah. I want to ask one more thing, and then I have to talk to you. Larry. No. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk to you, but one the one question I want to ask you: the Latin Roots. Show yeah. because your father started out doing well, singing that's, Latin music. That's, that's why it's called Latin Roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it's my tribute to why I do what I do. Really, yeah. I think I'm in this business a little bit because of you know the sense of acting and the comedy and the television. But I ended up segueing into concerts and music um, right. some 30 years ago, and I think that's because of everything that I learned from watching what my father did, and yeah. I don't know where I'd be without it. So. Well, I was going to introduce you, and I didn't do it that way, to say she sings, she dances, she's beautiful. Well, you can still do it. See, you just sings, did it. Sings, dances, beautiful. You just okay. did it. Put that in the beginning. And she has a very talented husband. You both met when you were both doing Broadway shows. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Neil Simon, both mm -hmm. of us. You were both doing Neil Simon. Yeah, yeah. she was doing their playing our song, and I was doing chapter two at a different theater, of course. And uh, I actually saw her opening night because my show was produced by the same man, Manny Eisenberg, who produced her show. Uh -huh. And we got in opening night and sat in a box, and I'd never seen her before. I thought, well, she's very good. She's fresh. She's new. She's different. And then forgot about her <laughs> for, for months yeah. until, <laughs> until I met her by uh, accident in Joe Allen's restaurant. Uh, I don't know what day it was. I mean, September tenth, nineteen seventy-nine. Oh, okay. Not that I remember exactly. No. <laughs> About three fifteen in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Girls uh, remember these. I just things, wandered you know, over there, and uh, there she, she, was. she tells it better than I do. But it's it's mm -hmm. a good story. But uh, we became friends. Yeah. Which That's is the always, best it's way to have love. The best way. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking to get involved. I was just finished getting a divorce. Yeah. And I was taking care of my two sons. Uh, but it began to happen, and it was 
quite amazing. 32 years ago. Can you imagine? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That is. They said that, it wouldn't last. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they say it doesn't last in show business, and you see. And children. here's the proof. And five children, and all of them are talented. They which are. Is yes, they are. Very interesting. And I do want to talk about your shows, but I want to later come back to the children, because I think yeah. how you raise kids and, and with your busy careers, yeah, to be easy. able to, to do that and mm. do it well mm. is something very to be commended for. Okay, you are bringing Clarence Darrow tonight yes. to Palm Springs. That's on March 10th, mm -hmm. which is a Sunday, and it's a matinee, so it'll be Clarence Darrow today. But, okay. but it is, uh, it's basically Clarence Darrow when he was broke, way before the big trials, uh, went out on the lecture circuit. He was known as the Great Satan because where he was lecturing was all the most part of the country, and uh, people had not heard anything to shake up their beliefs in God or their beliefs in government or anything mm -hmm. else. And so he, he, uh, he went out uh, for a hundred bucks a pop and uh, became who he was going to be. The reason he's important is not only he was the greatest defense attorney we've ever had, he was the greatest humanist we've ever had. He defines humanism. And the Scopes trial is only one of a bunch of trials, the Leopold Loeb mm. and the Sweet trial, which Well, that's both kind of interesting I mean, when you mention that, because I really didn't realize, I'd forgotten if I had noted, mm -hmm. that he had defended them. Yes, he, he did. And, yeah, and, and you know, I keep thinking how awful, how horrible these two young men were, and yet... He approached it totally and, differently. Right, he I saw a little point, clip. The point of, yes, oh, that's on my website, yes. Yeah, I'm going to tell our viewers, they better watch it. Right, and <laughs> he approached it from the point of view, which was new to people, what caused these boys to do this? They were extremely smart young men. At 16, they were in the University of Chicago, mm. which was uh, the be one of the best universities in the country. And of course, they committed this horrible crime. So his, his summation at the hearing for clemency, really. They were guilty, yes. but there was a hearing and it lasted 12 hours. And at the end, a reporter said, Chicago Tribune said, at the end, his voice was indistinguishable from the silence mm. in the room. People were just held like that. So those kind of things were dramatically interesting, but the more interesting thing was, what did he stand for? And why did he insist on it, insist on it against his, his own economic well-being. He didn't make a lot of money. And uh, I, I can identify with that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's, uh, he was a great guy. And uh, I, I've got a million stories and they'll, all, they'll take all day, but. I have to say, I have to interrupt you in a yeah. way to say, you didn't make a lot of money even though you were the half-brother of Spock? <laughs> ah, yeah. Yes. <coughs> Star yes. Trek? Yes, and I'm also the uncle of the, the Wachowskis, the Matrix guy. In, in real life, Spock real was life. just a made-up thing, but you actually Spock are. Spock wasn't a made-up thing. Oh, no, excuse oh, me. Oh, no. <laughs> May Star the Trek force be with all of us. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about Star Trek when I got the job. It was an absolute, and I got it because of Lyndon. Yeah, well. Because Bill Shatner had seen Lyndon on public television. Which was, again, a one-man show, one like show. you are going to do with Cl uh, Clarence Darrow. Yes, mm -hmm. I do four. Clarence Darrow, Lyndon Johnson, Teddy Roosevelt and Ernest Hemingway. And I'm now working on the Bible, so. You, are you really? I am really. That's going to be. Abraham. Yeah, that's right. Larry and Abraham, or Abraham and Larry. Well, Abraham and Larry yeah. show. The yeah. Abraham and Larry I show. I read that. I have, I have to say that, well, you're going to be at the Annenberg Theater. Yes, I forgot to say that, didn't I? Yeah. And, uh, and what it is. With in Clarence Edo. Darrow today, but our viewers can get a peek of some of it. Because if they do go to your website, yeah. there are clips from each of these one-man shows. And I sat here watching them last night, and oh, I, I was going to watch one. I yeah. had to watch all. And they're so different and so wonderful in each Isn't one they? of them. Let me just say where they are. They're at Annenberg Theater, 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Free. Right. It's free. March 10th. Free. Two March 10th. Sunday, yeah. March 10th. And then, and, 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 it's, it's a and the 12th. And on the 12th right. for uh, schools. And it's a, a program called, a series called Play Dates, which is a community kind of thing that's been hosted by the Coyote uh, Theater Works and yeah. uh, Chuck Yates. Yeah. So. And they, it's free. 
That's, that's that? amazing that free. they're doing that free. That's I think it's late for the children. Oh, it's free. No, that's quite amazing. You want to give away theater the to people. The whole series you know? of shows that you do yes. is so intriguing because it, as we said before you were on the air, or you said, it's the 20th century. And it, it's right. so good for Americans, for children, to know this side of all of these individuals. I did this for a fifth grade in New York at the Seneca School in Queens. Mm -hmm. Fifth graders. I, I didn't want to do it, but my niece got me into it. Yeah. The principal said, don't worry about this. These kids will be prepped. And they were. They listened with absolute silence as I did 45 minutes of the Clarence Darrow talking about capital punishment, talking about yeah. racism. At the end, they, the, the teachers immediately ran around every place with a microphone and said, you. Yep. <laughs> and they had a question. The yeah. kids had a question. And good. they had good questions. But there was a kid in the front row kept putting his hand up, putting his hand up. I was looking at a front row of America, you know, payuses and, and uh, uh, dreadlocks, everything. Huh. Anyway, the kid kept putting his hand up. The bell rang. They said, oh, that's it. And I said, no, wait a minute. This kid is here. He's got a question. What's your name? He said, Jose. I said, Jose, what's your question? He said, when did you die? When did you die? Yes. Meaning Everybody Clay, laughed. you were so <laughs> Everybody laughed. I said, no, great question, because he totally believed that, you... that the man was there. Yeah. That's that amazing. That, really back is. Somehow? that he was there. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. It is. And I, I, they said, Never told me when that. did he live? And I said, 1857, before the Civil War, to what, the day that the Nazis marched into Poland. Oh, my. 39. And that, that covered the whole audience. It hmm. was incredible. They, yeah. they were like, everybody knew what I was talking about. You know what I loved in the Linden? No, not Lyndon. I love Lyndon too. But Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt, yes. and the way you move. And that again, you have to look at it. Yeah. Thank you. He studied <laughs> and, and talked he researched. to the children. He re researches these things for Must. months and months and months and months before he sits down to write them with a thousand post-it notes on about seven hundred books. And the then, old he, way. then he goes, "Okay, here comes the yeah. story." We'll be back with you in just a few seconds. But first, these messages. Welcome to the magnificent Palm Springs Air Museum, located at the Palm Springs Airport, only minutes from the center of town, just off the 10 freeway at the Gene Autry exit. For group reservations and schedules, please call 760-778-6262. Experience the exciting history of aviation at the Palm Springs Air Museum. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? The sounds of the world are clear again. I can hear, I can hear, I can hear. Yeah, he can hear, he can hear, he can hear. Why? Why? Because you took me to advanced hearing, that's why. I did, advanced hearing, where we both got an anthem. We, we can hear. You know, when it comes to fine food, you will never find a better restaurant than La Valerie's, with its picturesque patio and amazing culinary dishes, which have won La Valerie's the rating perfect to extraordinary. Every year from the Zagat International Food Survey, the rating is for Valerie's food, ambiance, and service. No wonder this restaurant in Palm Springs has been a Southern California favorite for over 35 years. The number for reservations is 760 Three two five five zero five nine. I will see you at La Valerie's. We are so lucky that Larry Luckenville and his beautiful wife Lucy Arnez have decided to spend time in our desert. And you're renting now, but you are going to build a house, right? <laughs> or Actually, buy one. Well, we like it so much down here that yeah. we decided we would come down and spend a little time and see if we wanted to buy a house. And we ended up liking it so much we bought two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you're getting it ready while you're in the well, right yeah. now. Well, no, yes, we, we bought two. But buy two, they're cheap, you know. We bought <laughs> two because we couldn't make up our mind. And we thought, well, we'll fix up one and rent it. And, or maybe we'll live there and we'll... Anyway, yeah. we bought two, and now we've decided which one, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, we like the best. And we're going to live in that one, and we're going to sell 
the other one. Yeah, both Why so, not? Great or you can you know anybody yeah. who would like to buy an absolutely gorgeous? Because one is on one mountain and one is on the other mountain. Yeah. They're both good for different reasons, but That's it's fabulous. a it's Coldwell, Coldwell Banker, John Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Coldwell Banker, John Nelson, Lucy and Larry's house. Tell them you want to buy yeah. it. It's a, it's a gorgeous house. Cool it's house. got five bedrooms. Great view. Four, good, four cool. bedrooms and a wonderful yeah. kitchen. Did, and did a you pool. spend much time down here at all? Lots of your folks. I grew up down here. You did. My yeah. mom and dad built one of the first houses at Thunderbird Country Club right. in 1954. To put all those other rumors to rest that they ever lived anywhere else down here except there. Oh, there's, I know. There's all these houses. Oh, your mother lived there. I said, no, she didn't. No. Anyway, she only lived there. And when she passed away, Gary Morton in inherited that house, which was yeah. great. And then he died there, right. and his right. widow still lives there. Correct. And it's a beautiful house my father built and was enlarged throughout the years. And it with the most beautiful view of the mountains. And the house that we decided to keep mm -hmm. of the two houses that we yeah. bought, um, I think one of the reasons that I decided I liked it the best was because it had the same exact light exposure that my mom's house had. And I didn't realize that until after I'd been in it a while. And I said, I think this is why I like it. The kitchen faces the same way. The light comes in. The master bedroom is the same way. Yeah. The living room is this. It's a sense memory that I really love. Yeah. And, uh, and the I house great also, also is like a Beverly Hills house. Which, it is. It's really not up. like a Palm Springs. You know, a lot of Palm Springs houses down here are Santa Fe or sort of Spanish. Yeah. And we were going that direction. And this one is more like a traditional house, but in the desert. And you could do anything you wanted right. with the inside of it. Yeah. And uh, lots of glass. The people who live there were married 60 years. And they lived there 65. since they built the house in 95. And they both just passed away. Mm -hmm. So the, the family is selling the house, and that's why we got it. But um, it's going to be so much fun. And we're not buying it as a second house. We are actually living we're here. Move but here. You we're going to move so, here full time. But you, you're all over the country. Yeah, so yeah. it's a good Performing. place to perch, yeah. right, when you don't have to be somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. And you go back to the University of Arkansas. I know that you are a graduate. Right. And yes. you taught there, held master classes. Yes, uh, back in j the, the summer, and then I went back in November to... Uh, read some of Lyndon, and I gave a speech about mm -hmm. why I got into doing the one-man things, which was a detour. I was never going to do any one-man shows. That was ridiculous. We were in New York. I was doing the, uh, the Neil Simon show, and she had a little group uh, between shows called the Matinee Idols, and she invited me to come. And I couldn't most of the time because I was co cooking for my sons, my children. and. Uh, one day I did come and Phyllis Newman was there and she was doing Diary of a Mad Housewife on Broadway, which is a one-woman show, and I said, How, what is it like? And she said, well, it's, it's kind of lonely. Mm. I said, that, that had never struck me. And then she said, but the worst part is when the stage manager knocks on the door and says, place, please. Instead of places. Right, it's an right. inside joke. That is an, an inside theater. joke, and it went right over my head for a moment. Oh, in the okay. theater, That's they great. say when, at 8 o'clock when yeah, the screen goes up, it's places. Yeah. And she said they just say place, please. <laughs> <laughs> because what I found out with Lyndon, after about 20 minutes, you're saying, who the hell is going to talk back to me? Yeah. You know? yeah. But I got to like it. Yeah. And, and now I can't work with humans. But had you written, <laughs> had you written before? I mean, or had you written other yeah. other plays yes, and things? Yes, yes, I had written yeah. plays yeah. before, and uh, but this was a, a unique thing because these gentlemen that I settled on mm -hmm. were so strong in their lives, and they had such great uh, motors to their lives, the things that they in, intended to do and did. Uh, and, and Linda and I started out hating uh, because I was a southerner; I'm from Arkansas, and when he, you know. Nobody could do better than Kennedy. You know, <laughs> we all felt that way, I think, and, and I didn't like him at all. And David Susskind called me and he said, you're doing this one-man show called Lyndon. I said, no, I'm not. He, he said, why? I said, I'm not six feet five. I'm, I'm not a southern politician, and, and, uh, and I hate this son of a bitch. <laughs> and he said, why is that? I said, because of the war. And he said, this is, that's what, that, comes, that will change. Mm -hmm. And it did change, as I learned more about who Lyndon really was and what a great president he was, if you take the war out of it. Yeah. And he took responsibility for the war, and, and it wrecked him. Right. Well, you bring that out. Yeah. Beautifully. It's there. It's there. And you said he wanted to love, not kill, or He's something like that. He's a lover, like not that. a fighter. That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. And he did. He gave us 
uh, voting rights and civil rights right. and Medicare and Head Start and Operation Bootstraps and all of those things, the great society mm -hmm. programs, which look as if we had kept them going, things might be slightly different mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But nobody but him could have done it because he had been the master of the Senate. So he knew how to get. get we need him done. now. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And knew how to work together. Yes, yes exactly. Obviously. He yes. paced himself, too. He knew when it was the right time to mm -hmm. put a bill through and when it was the wrong time. People say, why didn't you do that? Because it's not the right time. It exactly. won't go through right now. It's but too he soon. He worked slowly, you know, until they were ready for it and then <laughs> hit him now. And uh, well, we need somebody on, like that. On race relations, people yeah. kept saying 10 years before he could get it done. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. And he kept saying, you're not going to get the votes. We can't do it yet. And he endured all of that, you know, who are you? Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you doing this? It, the, being a president ain't easy. No, I am sure it's yeah. not easy. Yeah. It can't and be. Teddy Roosevelt was another great yeah. for Republican president. And I love the way you do him. <laughs> what I saw. The yes. little bit. I have to see all of them now. Yeah. Yes. So maybe you'll come back after yeah. we see yes. Clarence, Darrow, and I'll do I'll come more. to your living room, Gloria, and read it to you. I think that if the Coyote Stage Works uh, Playdates things mm -hmm. is a success, and they'll do more and more of these, he should do each one of them. Right. It'll be, it's wonderful. It'll be wonderful. And, and the fact that you are going to do it for the children on March 12th, yeah. Yeah. bringing in the students, yeah. yes. it, is so important because they have to know the human side of names that they read about. It's telling history the right way, which is through an, a unique individual and mm -hmm. what they did and how it, how, how it changed them and yeah. all of that. Okay, <coughs> now. Yes. Five children. Yeah. Not children, they're big. Yeah, yes. they're growing ups now. But. Yeah. But you did raise five. Yes. And you both are so busy that I, I how do you do with that? How did you do that and they have them come out beautifully and talented? Well but that's you know, this is the not jury's easy. out on, you know, how anybody <laughs> comes out. I love these kids and they're all talented and they're all struggling because they're all artists. Every one of them. You know, if they could put up a shingle and be a lawyer or somebody who could charge a whole bunch of money to do, they're art, write, songwriters, musicians, a, a painter, an artist, uh, a writer, um, a graphic designer, a rap track artist. But they love what they do. They're exceptionally good at what they do. But they daughter chosen. works in advertising. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kate was the an youngest. actress and a singer, but she's now in advertising because she's the only one of the bunch that said, I need to have a paycheck at the end of the week. <laughs> a regular I life. need to be able to pay my rent. I need insurance. I want vacation yeah. pay. She's, and so she's yeah. got like a real life. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the rest, but she's a talented writer. And she could just be a writer, too. Yeah. But she's using it in the advertising. She has her too, own so. blog. Mm -hmm. Kate. We're very, we're, yeah. I have to go to that. <laughs> you should. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you right. said one of, one of them did your websites? Ben. Yes, my son Ben, His who's the son, ben second Luckin. oldest. Yeah, he's he's multi-talented kid, and uh, mm -hmm. he did the website, and uh -huh. uh, I think it's a terrific website. It's he's so extremely talented. It's so navigable, and I love the graphics. He's very hip. Something and he's very funny. Funny. Dot com, That's what I did. I'm trying to remember. I was decided to look up something, and and it comes out it has nothing to do with what it sounds like. Now I forget what it was. Oh. I'm missing the point. Okay. It'll come back to you yeah. if it's important. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow the next day. Yes. <laughs> it's great. I never get the chance to talk about these things. But no, but it's, nice. it's, it's wonderful. And it's, it's, it's your yeah. life. You were asking. And that's what I want to oh, share I want to make with our one, viewers. One point about these one-man shows. It, yes. I never intended to do this. When Saskan called me and said, you're going to do this, I resisted. Yeah. And it became a 25-year obsession when I learned what the point of it was, which mm -hmm. was that I could interpret American issues through these men to a big audience. And, and it just grew and grew and grew. And I, I've done them lots of times. I'm done sure. them in New York, done them on 42nd Street, done them on television. But the best thing now is I can afford to give them away. Well, I noticed that after looking at the beginning, you said if you want to see the whole thing. Yeah. And one in the morning, I decided I don't have to no. see the whole no. thing until tomorrow or the next the day. Thing, and I'd rather right? see you in person at the Thank Annenberg yeah. Theater. Thank you. Or wherever yeah. you're going to do it next. Thank you. And, y you know, you do so much also, singing, dancing, the whole, the whole. Yeah, you know, when work. you start out loving musicals as a kid, I mean, what I used to do 
was sit home and listen to musical comedy albums 24-7. That's what I loved. And I, music was the first thing that I wanted to do. And I kind of took this sideways you know, jaunt into television because my mother was looking for a new way to do her series and she put Desi yeah. and I on the show, which was a great learning experience. Of course. But as soon as I could, I went back and became a musical performer. And I mm -hmm. did summer stock and Broadway and things like that. And then the only thing that changed it was that I, my father died and, and I started listening to all this amazing original Desi Arnaz Orchestra music yeah. and I was yeah. so inspired by this that all I wanted to do at that point, even though I'd been in films and been the jazz singer and I did right. television and Broadway, and I just wanted to be on a big stage in front of an audience, in front of a band that good and uh -huh. have charts as fantastic as his. And I just kind of put it out there to the universe thinking, well, that'll never happen. But you know it's what they say. They say, just tell the universe what you want, be specific. Mm -hmm. And bizarrely enough, within, within a year, things started to find yeah. themselves in my way. And it was like, oh, do you want to put together a show for Sicily? And we'll get, you know, what? what? I don't even have an icon back. 23 years later, this is what I've been doing. This is how, basically, how I make tour. my living. I still do Broadway. I did Dirty Rotten Scoundrels recently, and not that recently. But every once in a while, yeah. when something good comes along, I'll stop and go do that. But I make my living doing music right. now, and um, I love it. And you know, so sitting here thinking as you were talking, but an overlap of the two of you mm -hmm. meeting because you're both doing Broadway shows and both doing you know, Simon shows. Yeah. But you conducted the master class at University of, of Arkansas. Arkansas. You starred in master class yeah. as Maria Callas. Yes. There you go. Right? Yeah. Good segue. Yeah, exactly. Fabulous part, my gosh. Must have been. Well, it's like a big long monologue in itself. It practically is a one woman show. Yeah. You know, it's just endless amounts of information. I had to study opera and Italian and her life. And I, they wanted me to do it in January. And I said, no, I, that's only a month from now. Give me six months. And I really had to immerse myself in what that was. But it's a wonderful part. I have to say to both of you, goodbye. Oh, we got to <laughs> do this you. again. And I hope we can do this again, because there's yeah. so much we didn't talk about. Yes. Yeah, there's, that's, yeah, it's fun. It'll be great to be here. And John you. Nelson, Caldwell Banker, by our house. <laughs> Then you too can live commercial. next door to me. <laughs> we can't you. have two houses. We thank have you, to only Lucy. have one. Thank, thank you, you Lawrence. Thank you Thanks very, very much. Thanks very much, Gloria. And thank you for being with us. And we'll see you next time.